Hey everyone, we are reading the one and only Ivan. Go ahead and get your copy out. I'm on page 32. 32 is called A Plan. It's been two days since anyone's come to visit. Mac is in a bad mood. He says we are losing money, hand over fist. He says he's going to sell the whole lot of us. When Thelma, a blue and yellow macaw, demands, kiss me, big boy. For the third time in 10 minutes, Mac throws a soda can at her. Thelma's wings are clipped so that she can't fly, but she still can hop. She leaps aside just in the nick of time. Puckle up, she says with a shrill whistle. Mac stops to his office and he slams the door. I wonder if my visitors have grown tired of me. Maybe if I learn a trick or two, or two, it will help. Humans do seem to enjoy watching me eat. Luckily, I am always hungry. I am a gifted eater. A silverback must eat 45 pounds of food a day if he wants to stay a silverback. 45 pounds of fruit and leaves and seeds and stems and bark and vines and rotten wood. Also, I enjoy the occasional insect. I am going to try to eat more. Maybe then we will get more visitors. Tomorrow, I will eat 50 pounds of food, maybe even 55. That should make Mac happy. Bob. I explain my plan to Bob. Ivan, he says. Trust me on this one. The problem is not your appetite. He hops onto my chest and licks my chin, checking for leftovers. Bob is a stray, which means he does not have a permanent address. He is so speedy, so wily, so that the mall workers long ago gave up trying to catch him. Bob can sneak into cracks and crevices like a tracked rat. He lives well off the ends of hot dogs he pulls from the trash. For dessert, he laps up spilled lemonade and splattered ice cream cones. I've tried to share my food with Bob, but he is a picky eater and says he prefers to hunt for himself. Bob is tiny, wiry, and fast, like a barking squirrel. He is nut-colored and big-eared. His tail moves like weeds in the wind, spiraling, dancing. Bob's tail makes me dizzy and confused. It has meanings within meanings, like human words. I am sad, it says. I am happy, it says. Beware, I may be tiny, but my teeth are sharp. Gorillas don't have any use for tails. Our feelings are uncomplicated. Our rumps are unadorned. Bob used to have three brothers and two sisters. Humans tossed them out of, a uh, out of a truck onto the freeway when they were a few weeks old. Bob rolled into a ditch. The others did not. Mm -hmm. he, er, his first night on the highway, Bob slept in the icy mud of a ditch. When he, when he woke, he was so cold that his legs would not bend for an hour. The next night, Bob slept under some dirty hay near the Big Top Mall garbage bins. The following night, Bob found the spot in the corner of my domain where the glass is broken. I dreamed that I'd eaten a furry donut, and when I woke, the, uh, when I woke in the dark, I discovered a tiny puppy snoring on top of my belly. It had been so long since I'd felt the comfort of another's warmth that I wasn't sure what to do. Not that I hadn't had visitors. Mac had been in my domain, of course, and many other keepers. I'd seen my share of rats zip past, and the occasional wayward sparrow had fluttered in through the hole in my ceiling. But they never stayed long. I didn't move all night for fear of waking Bob. Wild. Once, I asked Bob why he didn't want a home. Humans, I'd noticed, seemed to be irrationally fond of dogs, and I could see why a puppy would be easier to cuddle with than, say, a gorilla. Everywhere is my home, Bob answered. I am a wild beast, my friend, untamed and undaunted. I told Bob that he could work in the shows like Snickers, the poodle who rides Stella. Bob said Snickers sneaked sleeps on a pink pillow in Mac's office. 
He said she eats foul-smelling meat from a can. He made a face, his lips curled, revealing tiny needles of teeth. Poodles, he said, are parasites. Picasso. Mac gives me a fresh crayon, a yellow one, and 10 pieces of paper. Time to earn your keep, Picasso, he mutters. I wonder who this Picasso is. Does he have a tire swing like me? Does he ever eat his crayons? I know I have lost my magic, so I try my very best. I clutch the crayon and I think. I scan my domain. What is yellow? A banana. I drew a banana. The paper tears, but only a little. I lean back and Mac picks up the drawing. Another day, another scribble, he says. One down, nine to go. What else is yellow, I wonder, scanning my domain. I draw another banana. And then I draw eight more. Three visitors. Three visitors are here. A woman, a boy, a girl. I strut across my domain for them. I dangle from my tire swing. I eat three banana peels in a row. The boy spits at my window. The girl throws a handful of pebbles. Sometimes I'm glad the glass is there. My visitors return. After the show, the spit pebble children come back. I display my impressive teeth and I splash my filthy pool. I splash in my filthy pool. I grunt and hoot. I eat and eat and eat some more. The children pound their pathetic chests. They toss more pebbles. Slimy chimps, I mutter. I throw a me ball at them. Sometimes I wish the glass were not there. Sorry. I'm sorry I called those children slimy chimps. My mother would be ashamed of me. That's where we're going to stop today.